Hello everyone and welcome to K-Park, the home of East Schoolbride Football Club. My name's Steg Thompson and I've just been announced as the club's official e-manager. And what that means is I'm going to be using the very popular game Football Manager 20 and I'm going to be taking you all on a journey of trying to get East Kilbride promoted for the first time ever into the senior leagues of Scottish football. So, let's get that show on the road. So just to give you a wee introduction to the team, they were founded in 2010 and within that short time frame of the last 10 years, if we load up the competitions, they have won the Lowland League twice in 2017 and 2019. They've also been runner-ups twice, 2015, 2018, which is very good for a club that was just founded 10 years ago. They are semi-professional status, they do play in a navy blue in like a gold uh, uh, shirt, uh, the away shirt is white, uh, it's going to be exciting, we have done a wee bit of pre-season, so we've done pretty well in our pre-season games, first up we've got Edinburgh City, so these games here, uh, as part of this episode, is going to be the, the League Cup, so within the League Cup we've got Albion Rovers, Dunfermline, Edinburgh City and Livingston, there's only one team that qualifies from it, so Livingston being a SPL team, you would certainly think they're the ones that's going to qualify. You have also got Dunfermline, which is a championship team, so to us, to steal points off of them, might be a wee bit of a miracle. What I'm hoping to do is have a wee bit of fun, and hopefully we can get points off Edinburgh City, or Al Albion Rovers, sorry. It's going to be exciting. Uh, we have been set a wee bit of a challenge with the head of content creation at East Kilbride, who is David Craig, I will refer to him as the e-chairman. So what he's done is asked me to just not make any signings and try use last season's squad to get them promoted into the senior flights of Scottish football again, uh, for the first time ever, sorry. Uh, so I, using last season's squad, a lot of the players as well, are they in the right positions, just just because the way the game loads up, but I won't bore you as with all that. I'm looking forward to getting stuck in, so the first game of it is going to be against Edinburgh City. And I'm just going to load it up and get stuck into them, because I'm pretty confident we can maybe even get a draw, and that will give us a good wee boost. So, as you see, with the team, I've got Proctor coming back on, I want to play David Brownlee there. Get Malcolm, I would rather maybe even play Keon Gibbons there. We've got Winter and Woods on the bench. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this boy Scullion there on the right wing. Just to just to see what he brings to the game. Uh, just because he's in on loan as well. I want, I want to see what he can do in a big match like this. But there's, there's guys to come off the bench if we need it. Uh, and I'm pretty... Pretty confident, let's just say, before the match begins, but we'll soon see uh, how we cope within the Scottish League Cup. Right away, they've got a, an injury. We're, we're actually playing here in a red and white uh, style of strip here, just so you don't get confused who we are. But right away, they've got a nice free kick into our box, which was broken down and saved with McGinley. Great safe hands, he seems to be so far. He seems to be the reliable keeper that I'm going to trust uh, within this series so far. Seems pretty good. With Kavanagh, unlucky son. That was a great effort for the edge of the box. That was a bit daft from Edinburgh City, I would say there. That was like quite desperate to get it out of the park. Scullion looks like he needs a wee bit of a rest, so we'll keep an eye on him as the game progresses. Because we don't, we don't want him to get too tired, do you know what I mean? Uh, and especially if we've got players like Woods and Winter and Healy that could even come on there and uh, do a bit of damage. Rudy Payton as well, one of our better attacking-minded players. And get in! Ross Kavanagh with an Anton Brady assist, get in. Makes it 1-0 East Kilbride. This, this is the type of result that we're looking for. Uh, still a long way to go in the game though. Against the top side uh, for League 2, I would say they're Probably up there for favourites to win League 2 uh, within the game. But I, I'm quite happy with that. They've obviously had two injuries there. I'm just going to do a wee bit of a passionate team talk 
tell them they're capable of doing better. Again, I'm just going to keep an eye on Scullion, just to see if we need to take him off soon. Probably about the 60 minute mark. Go on, Kavanagh. Unlucky. I think he was looking for somebody at the far post to run onto that. So maybe the tired legs are impacting that. So it is now at the 60th minute. You know what I'm going to do? We will. We'll make a wee change there. We'll quickly take Scullion off. And what I'll do is I'll bring on Daryl Healy. Because I want to see what he can bring. Ross Cavan has been playing an absolute blinder. He is a bit tired as well. So I'm going to take him off for Sean Winter. Just to add a wee bit of character over to the other wing as well. Edinburgh City scored a great goal for a free kick there. So it's Thompson, long ball up. I think it was Watson. And Adam Watson gets the goal for them. So it was a good goal for a good free kick. That's what they're capable of. That's what can change the game. And boom, for another free kick. They were pushing us again, but they're sending it back to their goalkeeper. To be fair as well, we are playing quite attacking. I do believe in the team. And right away we've got a penalty. So Anton Brady steps up and makes it 2-1. Happy with that. Absolutely delighted with that. 2 1 East Kilbride in the Scottish League Cup. Who would have thought it? Absolutely buzzing. Oh, I hear that's where they're going to be really dangerous, I think, is from these free kicks. Especially in swinging into the box like that. Right away, Holmes driving towards our defence. Stevenson with a great tackle twice. Great block as well, we're centre back there. Absolutely buzzing with that. They seem to be all over us now, don't they? I'll take that yellow card, Kieran Gibbons, mate. I'll take that. Just they were absolutely battered in the door there. Black plays it through to Shepard. Great save, McGinley. Great save, son. That's what I'm talking about. Just obviously, I've no recorded the pre season games. I thought they would be a bit boring. Uh, but he's been pretty safe hands for us. I've been pretty buzzing about him. Can he make any more subs? Oh, aye, it's because it's the cup. Because I was uh, playing the pre season games, I'm trying to make more than three subs. Uh, so I do apologise. Let's go. Woodsy whitting it in. Unlucky Woodsy. Scott Shepherds. Hopefully, we I do something to push it wide of the post or something there. Happy with that. But I 91 minutes in the clock, and we are the ones attacking again. Hopefully, they don't get this counter now. Great save, McGinley. I'm a bit nervous now, I'm not going to lie. Hopefully, we hold it off. Great save, McGinley. He's up there for man in the match in my eyes in this game. It is tough to decide, but that's how I would probably get it, actually. He's pulled off a few belters for us. Gibbons. Come on, referee, blow the whistle. Finally, we get our first win of the series, 2-1 against Edinburgh City. It was pretty end-to-end, -end, even looking at the stats within the, the actual match itself. A wee bit nervy towards the end. I wasn't sure if we were actually going to pull it off, if I'm honest with you. But I, Kavanagh, he's the one that seems to be getting the accolades there. We load it back in. Uh, he gets man of the match. To be fair, he absolutely had a blinder as well. So next up, we're going to have Albion Rovers. And let's see how we do against the mighty Albion Rovers, who again is playing in League 2, the division above us. But I'm pretty confident we can get off. We've got off to a good start. I'm pretty confident against Albion Rovers. We should be able to at least get a draw again or a win. I'm, I'm going to put my neck in the line and say and we're going to get a win against them. But we're going to get stuck into training. We'll see you for game two. So we had a great week at training. Uh, the reports are all in. We've picked our team for the match against uh, Albion Rovers. I'm pretty confident again getting into this game. Hopefully we, the boys can do the damage. That That's what I'm going to say there. Uh, especially after beating a team like Edinburgh City. It's certainly going to be giving me massive amounts of confidence getting into the season starting. Especially if we can steal points here as well within this. Obviously, the chances of his qualifying are quite slim. And right away, Dean Cairns gets the goal at the far post from a Rory Payton corner. 
great corner in, Proctor just missed it, but you know what, I'm not even caring that he missed it, Cairns boy got it at the back post for us there, one nil East Kilbride within the first 10 minutes, I'm happy to go and get an early goal like that. Right away, Daryl Healy, right down the right hand side, cuts it back, and boom, Anton Brady makes it 2-0. Are we, are we going to get a great scoreline here? Who knows? We're sticking with an attacking sort of formation. But I am absolutely delighted with that. Absolute cracking goal. 2 0 East Kilbride. Who would have thought it this early in? It, obviously, the, the big game is going to be the next week within the game uh, where we play uh, Livingston. So that, that's where we'll get knocked back down to earth if we actually get a win here as well. I'm pretty sure they'll hammer us, but we'll play with some confidence again. There's no reason why not to. Let's just, let's me see where the squad's at within the game. And they're responding really well to the tactic that I've got there. Uh, we've been working on it well in training. And boom, 3-0, Daryl Healy. We get our own goal coming from an in-swinging free kick at the far post. Absolutely buzzing with that as well. Get in, Daryl, son. Get in. Keeper didn't know what to do there, I don't think. But we're, we're looking very strong, aren't we? We're looking quite an aggressive team, which is what you want to see, especially when we're going to be trying to push for the promotional spot uh, into League 2 next season. So the team's looking pretty solid. I'm just hoping throughout the season we don't get plagued with any injuries, because obviously we can't be replacing anyone. We'll start this second half. I'm absolutely delighted though. 3 0 at half time. I'm a wee bit relaxed now, to say the least. This this game's gave me not only has it gave me confidence, it's relaxed me a wee bit as well. Because uh, the the end of that other game with Edinburgh City became pretty tight, didn't it? So McGinley, I'm absolutely delighted with him, you know that. And Anton Brady, boom, makes it 4 0. Get in Anton son. Third goal of the season, it says there he's got now. Cairns, Rudy Payton. I'm liking Rudy Payton in behind the striker. He's adding a wee bit of uh, difference to the team. Aye, as well, as you see, everybody's now getting green ratings, which is very good. That's what you want to see across your team within a, this game. Uh, but I absolutely delighted. I hope the subs get our keep them warmed up there because we're going to make a couple of changes we can afford to. Matt, Matt McGinley made an absolute amazing save and then obviously the spillage, uh, he managed to leak John to it and recover. So maybe maybe we should be looking at uh, replacing one of our centre-backs there. Proctor, that, that's how we'll do. We'll, take, we'll get Ricky Miller on because Ricky Miller Seems to be a decent wee player uh, at this level as well. I am going to take Cairns off. I'm going to bring on Sean Winter into the midfield position. And you know what? Ross Kavana. I'm going to move Rudy Payton onto the wing. And I'm going to bring on Craig Malcolm in behind the, the striker. Just hoping we can get that fifth goal. That would be amazing. Good fellow made a good save for that. That throw-in came in like a corner there anyway, which is good because it's something we're working on in training as well. We're working on those long throws. I'm hopefully going to be taking advantage of that as the season goes on. Because I think sometimes that's... It's always a worry when a ball's coming into your box, isn't it? And there we go, Anton Brady. I couldn't take him off uh, because obviously we're sitting in two goals for the game here. Long ball up with Stevenson. Brady runs on it, left the defence for dust, and boom, makes it 5-1. Who would have thought it? I wouldn't have predicted this at the start of the game, that's for sure. But there you go, another long throw. I'm hoping we get a couple of cheeky goals with him as the, the season progresses. Wee bit of a careless pass, but you know what? We don't care, we're winning 5-1. Great save, McGinley. Redeemed himself there. I wouldn't even blame him though for, for the last goal because it was probably a powerful shot. And swing it. Are you, can you can we believe this? That's disallowed. I was going to say we were going to be winning this 6-1. That would have been incredible. 
uh, to be beating a League 2 team. Considering obviously we scored it, obviously it was offside, but it's still incredible. 5-1 against Albion Rovers. Let me know in the comments what you think of these first two results. I'm absolutely shocked, I'm not going to lie. I'm buzzing. I think we're going to get knocked down to earth a wee bit. As soon as we play the likes of Livingston and that. And Dunfermline, obviously. Can we steal any points off them? Let's wait and see, but I'm excited to get stuck into those games as well. See you next up at Livingston, lads. So game week three is here against Livingston. We are twelve to one outsiders, but you know what? We have topped the group so far. Obviously, it's only two out of two. Livingston's one two out of two, but we topped the group so far in goal difference, and I'm buzzing about that. Obviously, we're twelve to one outsiders here. Uh, the other wee thing I need to update you on is we've drew Celtic reserves in the Challenge Cup first round. That's going to be a really tough test as well. Obviously, that will be on the next episode. Uh, so it's Livingston and Dunfermline, which will be the last two games here within this episode. We're going to get straight stuck in against Livingston. Obviously, as I said previously, can we get any points off them? It's going to be well, well, huge underdogs for this game. Let's let's just leave it there. I'm confident with some of the lads' ability, but you're up against the big boy Dykes at Livingston and that. And that they're a very, very strong team in comparison. So they're already whipping my ball in with a, a free kick like that. And we, we're having a goal. Sell and boom! Rudy Payton, will you believe that? 1 0 against Livingston. Can we maintain this? The jury's out. The jury's out. But Cairns brings it down, and Payton absolutely rifles it into that far post. Get in. 1 0 East Bride. Stuff of dreams. Th this is what it's all about. It's saying there, Ryan Cinnamon's booked. So we'll tell him he's off tackles a wee bit. Cam, do it, Ryan. We don't want to go down to 10 men because we'll get absolutely battered here if we do, mate. Get creative. Gibbons as well has been booked. Cam, do my man. I don't need to take you off. You're just as excited as me. Sorry, I did hit pause there. I do apologise. Right away, I've I've just done a wee shout onto the park, asking the boys to keep being creative, uh, to get them in fired up because I noticed that they are Gary Holt was basically giving them a wee bit of stick in the touchline as well. And big dykes, boom, comes back and brings us back to uh, planet Earth. Absolutely rattles that in. But what can you do when you've got a player like him playing against you up top? Absolutely night and day the difference. Do you know what I mean? Big Lyndon Dykes, absolute quality. But getting at half time one each, I definitely wouldn't have predicted this. We're twelve to one outsiders. I'm going to stick passionate. I'm going to say I'm pleased how things are. Keep it up, lads. I believe in you. Uh, the bookies didn't. Few people watching probably didn't. But I believe in you. Uh, go back out. Keep playing with confidence. Oh, and they've just made another 2-1. Lyndon Dykes. After me being positive for the start of the second half as well. What a strike that was an effort. And it just sort of trickles over the line. What can you do when you're absolutely battered with a corner like that? I, I thought they were going to score again. I was going to go, here we go. It's going to be goal after goal now. They were waiting in the second half before they, they took off. And it seems like they have. Immense Suda. Again, great, great cross there by Nicky Devlin. Here he is on the right hand side. Great vision. He knew where his man was in the far post. And Suda, unlucky, Matt McGinley. You know what? I'm going to take Ryan Cinnamon off. He looks a wee bit nervous out there. And obviously, they've just scored over in that uh, right back position. Again, Ross Kavanagh is looking anxious. He's playing on a 6.3. So I'm going to bring Woodsy on, get a wee bit of experience back on there, and we'll, we'll roll it again. Keep keeping your toes subs, because you don't know when you are going to be coming on. But I, what can you do when you've got a player like Dykes and that playing against you? But what a dream start as well. Like, that was unbelievable. They've got, uh, Woodsy, oh, I thought we were going to do something with that free kick there. Just to make it glided in. Daryl Healy, son, unlucky. Get it safe with the keeper, straight at him though. Just because it's the last few minutes, I'm just going to get Big Craig Malcolm on up top. 
and you know what? We'll put him in his preferred, uh, preferred role as a target man. We'll do support just so he links up with the other attacking minded players playing in behind him there. And we'll do a wee bit of demand more shouting. Uh, just in case, because they're, they're going to be battering down the door, I think, the last couple of minutes, because we've got tired legs, but so do they. They've got the experience there. 3 1. I thought that was going to be one of these sort of fairy tale games. Uh, we're done unlucky. Can't fault any of the lads' performance. It was just one of the days. The the bigger team there certainly gave us a wee bit of hope. Uh, sitting there in the disappointing collapse. We were unlucky. I think we, we showed a wee bit of who we are. Uh, and it gave me an excitement going towards the start of the season. If we can get a point or beat Dunfermline... We're going to finish higher than Dunfermline. We'll finish second place. Obviously, we don't progress in the cup, but I'm excited with so far how things are going. If we can finish higher or near enough higher than a championship team, I'm delighted with that. I can't wait to get stuck into the season. But next up's Dunfermline. We'll see you all there because we're going to go and get stuck into some training. So here it is, the final game of the Scottish League Cup. And it's up against Dunfermline. They are favourites, 2-5 to five on. Stevie Crawford is the manager there. Uh, they're obviously capable of tackling, it says there. The weakest points they're crossing. I'm not going to buy much into that because, again, the quality Dunfermline's got against us is next sort of level. They're a championship team. They're a few divisions above us. But if we can hang on to a draw, we'll finish higher than them, which will be incredible. It'll be a great journey. Failing that, we'll finish in six points. Worst case. So, we're already still higher than them in the goal difference. I'm going straight into the game with the same team we played against Livingston. They're going for a sort of fa uh, flat 4-4-2. So, we'll do a wee bit of passionate. We are the underdogs here again. It worked, I would say, kind of for the Livingston game as well. Turner Whitman in there. That could have been a 1-0. They've got a penalty. David Brownlee shoved his man Martin, I think it said there, but Nesbitt makes it 1-0 to Dunfermline, one minute into the game is not what you want to see, McGinley had no chance, straight over, close to the post, that's where you want your penalties to be going in it, uh, so you can't fault the striker Nesbitt there, they're certainly going for it, I think, wait, looking at their team, they've got a very strong team there as well, they've got Paul Payton in the middle of the park, he'll obviously do pretty well, uh, been intrigued to see how he, how he does if he gets a goal into his here. But Nesbitt up top is obviously going to be a bit of a danger. Livingston are already 3 1 against Albion Rovers as well. So they're definitely qualified. They were already qualifying before this game. Anton Brady, whip it in. Oh, great save for the keeper. That, that was unlucky. I think it was Daryl Healy that uh, came into that there. And then there you go, Lee Ashcroft gets a goal for Lewis Martin assist. Turner obviously started it off with a free kick, found his man Martin who knocks it down to Ashcroft and boom, 2-0 against Dunfermline. Uh, or Dunfermline are 2-0 up I should say. What can we do though? Uh, I was confident though. Ah, uh, I've, I've selected the wrong team talk there. That That's the difference between a game and real life. You can't really talk to the players, sometimes you'll make the odd mistake with pressing the wrong button, wouldn't you? But, I would certainly be giving them what for the new, to go back out there and get stuck back in. But, you can't you can't fault the lads, man. They, they've got stuck in so far in this uh, competition. They've done themselves proud. There's a couple of boys there looking tired, so Malcolm, go get yourself warmed up. You as well, Miller and Woodsy. That, that's the three changes we're making there. We're taking David Brownlee yeah, for Ricky Miller. We're going to bring on Woodsy. Where should we bring Woodsy on? I think we should bring him on behind the striker. And you know what? Anton Brady can come off. And Craig Malcolm can come on. So we'll go back to... We'll keep him on attack. And we'll change Woodsy to more of an advanced playmaker role. So just hoping that he links up a wee bit uh, with the striker on that as well. So, 2-0 against Dunfermline so far. Are we going to get a wee consolation goal? He's a wee bit of excitement back into it. What a goal, Kieran Gibbons, son. 
Absolute world day, mate. Absolute world day. Just as I say it, we're going to get a goal. He goes up there and does it. Would say, advanced playmaking role suits you, my man. Keeper had no chance to power on that to get a hand to it, but he couldn't do nothing about it. Absolute wonder strike, mate. Get in. Livingston are 5-3 against Albion Rovers. That's an incredible result for Albion. Getting three goals back into them. We know how hard that would have been. But I 2-1, can we get a wee late, late consolation goal for a draw here, finish higher? Nah, it's not, it's not going to happen. 2-1, I think again, we've showed a good side to ourselves there. Uh, I'm going to go Cam, I'm going to say, can he fault anybody's effort? Nope, they expected to win, but you know what, he's gave everything, lads. I'm really delighted with how the cup competition's gone. Uh, first episode, certainly pretty well. Just bring up the schedule there as well. We lost the last two games, as expected. We didn't expect the wins that we got, but... Next up is obviously Celtic re Reserves, and then we're getting stuck right into Lowland League football. So we'll see you all for episode 2. I've absolutely enjoyed doing episode 1. See you all soon.